I did one day of hunting at Wizard World Chicago in 2021 before the show opened. You want to see what I got, stay tuned for the video. Hey YouTube comic community, this is Jimmy the Geek Aficionado and I want to welcome you back to another episode of The Dealer Room. I, as I said in the intro, went to Wizard World Chicago and uh, I actually did all of my shopping before the show even opened. So, how did I do that? Well, I had a dealer badge and was able to go through and pick up some books from other dealers in, on the show floor and uh, I found some pretty amazing stuff, as a matter of fact. So we're gonna kick things off with a nice little haul that I got from actually a, a, a group of locals uh, who are, are down in the, I wanna say the Tinley Park area of, of Illinois. Uh, I was able to find some, some really great stuff there. Um, specifically, uh, Dave Stevens uh, related books. Um, but this first one is not Dave Stevens. Actually, this first one, I'm gonna throw a shout out to Comic Collector Geek for uh, having picked this up and, and showing this to me because I didn't even know it was out there and I'm so glad that he did because I was able to find a copy and pick one up for myself and this is uh, Betty Page's number seven uh, and this is actually a, an Olivia uh, Olivia D. Brardini special uh, that showcases a lot of her artwork specifically Betty Page work because it's Betty Page's right uh, and, and there's an interview in there with her as well. And, and this is uh, this is from some time ago. Um, I'm going to say that this is uh, yeah, this is back in 1990, according to the, the date on the on the picture here. But obviously, as you can see, just some incredible work. I'll try to get a shot here without the glare. But her line work is is fantastic. Uh, shading, contour, everything. She's really a stunning artist. Uh, but the, the inside of the book is also fantastic, so really happy to have gotten that one. And trying to complete my, my Dave Stevens cover run. And uh, was able to find a copy of World of Wood from 1983, uh, where there's a, a tentacled monster trying to take out that poor blonde on the, on the floor. This is just, uh, it's a Wally Wood book, right? So there's a lot of Wally Wood stories and this is one of two covers that Dave Stevens did. Uh, I picked up the other one actually at Megacon and so now Wizard World uh, helps me find the other one. So those are crossed off the list. So just uh, very cool work with the, sorry, I'm working with the, I'm working with the light glare here. Uh, very cool work with the, with the, the skeletons back there. Yeah, just, Great articulation, uh, and obviously, you know, his his work with drawing room is beyond compare. <clears throat> Keeping on those tones, um, probably should have had these uh, in the in the middle, but it's or rather before that last one, um, because we're back to Betty Page, and these these are some really special books, and, and here's why: because this. Uh, this includes two of my all-time favorite artists. Uh, covers by Dave Stevens, but the art and story are actually by Jim Silk. And that is Betty Page, Queen of the Nile. And that's, that's issue number one. With these, uh, I forget what they're called. Followers of the Pharaoh. Um, priests, maybe who are uh, giving her a nice little bath, uh, I think probably before she's sacrificed. And then we have issue number two, also a great cover. I mean, obviously these are all stunning covers, but what do I know? And then finally issue number three, where it appears that she's fighting herself. So just fantastic work, obviously. So pick those up. Got a good deal on those. Now, this next group of books, um, I'm going to not get so close on. Uh, these are, let's just say they're not for children. Um, it, this video isn't uh, in, its, in and of itself, but uh, Dave Stevens did some work for a company called Verotic, which was created by Glenn Danzig, which had, it was kind of like erotic horror stories. 
uh, but the covers are fantastic and they are erotic um, and they, they show a little bit of nudity. So if that's not your particular bag, then I would recommend skipping forward 15 seconds or 30 seconds and uh, we'll get through these relatively quickly. This is Neo Satanica Tales. Uh, and again, you know, covered by Dave Stevens. Uh, Venus Domina, uh, story by Glenn Danzig and uh, covered by Dave Stevens. This is the Candlemas Eve Special Edition. Uh, featuring a, a dominatrix there and then we have uh, the regular Venus Domina number one the new covenant and uh, this is probably my favorite I think this is the, the more uh, art creative beautiful one uh, this is Verotic Illustrated uh, issue number two uh, featuring like the little angel and, and devil uh, woman on the cover so beautiful artwork uh, needed to have to complete the collection, and uh, I'm ever so much closer to completing that collection. Okay, um, moving over to another booth of sellers that are from Georgia. Um, and I, I, I'm blanking on their names, so I apologize. Uh, but I bought from them, I bought a slew of stuff from them before at Megacon, and uh, found some even better stuff this time. So here's uh, X-Men Legacy number 241, and this is the Mike Mayhew Vampire variant. Uh, and I believe this came out at the time that they had launched uh, a new X-Men series, X-Men number one, uh, where Jubilee becomes a vampire. So this is just a, an excellent Gambit and Rogue cover. Uh, with, with there in black and white like an old movie, uh, and obviously the red background with the lighting. So very stunning, uh, got that for a good price. Not a 9.8, probably like a 9.6, 9.4 with a press, but still just in beautiful shape. Here's one that is a 9.8. Uh, and I, I just got back two copies of the variant of this, the David Mack variant, but uh, nothing compares to, uh, to this one. It's five Ronin number four with the Psylocke cover with the, uh, her back tattoo of the butterfly that she, that's indicative of her character, uh, particularly when she's using her side powers. But just stunning, absolutely stunning. Uh, finally glad to get a copy of this, especially one that I can get uh, slabbed, which is uh, a solid 9-8 candidate as well. So I'm digging that. And they, they just have a lot of the good stuff here. They just have a lot of good stuff at this booth. This is uh, Lorecroft Tomb Raider number 41, covered by Adam Hughes. Gotta get some of that glare out there. There we go. So Adam Hughes cover. Uh, he did a, a number of cop, uh, covers on this particular series. Uh, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but uh, they're kind of sporadic. Not, uh, not a consistent run like you did with Catwoman or any of the other ones. But uh, beautiful cover nonetheless. Now these are fun. <clears throat> so I picked these up because I had gotten, and I think I went over that in, in another video, uh, actually I think it was the previous Dealer Room video, I got at a Microcon, it was these spoof comics that Adam Hughes did when he was uh, earlier in his career. Uh, so building off of that uh, previous one, we have Spider Femme, number one. So great cover and it's just like, it's just cheesy, campy, you know, interior art and story. But it's still a fun book and a great uh, cover by Adam Hughes. And here's another fantastic one. This is Bat Babe, number two. Uh, again, covered by Adam Hughes. And just a, uh, get a little closer with that one. Yeah, just a lot of fun. Uh, I believe the other one that I had was, uh, was Dare Dame. Yeah, that's what it was, it was Dare Dame. And there's an X-Men one as well that I did pick up because they wanted a little too much money for it, a little more than I was willing to spend. Um, this is cool. So uh, I really do enjoy the work of Ryan Souk. Uh, he's done some, some great covers uh, that I've really enjoyed in the past. And when I came across this one, I had to pick it up. Uh, this is a Heroes Con Charlotte 2011 variant. Uh, it's like partial sketch and then uh, and then painted or uh, colored uh, featuring 
Batgirl and Supergirl. And I just, I dug it, so I had to pick it up. I hadn't seen it before. Um, so I'm wondering if there's one out there that's, you know, that, that's got the full color. I'd like to pick that up as well. But yeah, that was beautiful. And that's it for that particular booth. Um, another Chicago uh, local, or I should say native One Stop Comics, uh, had a couple of, uh, I had a, not a couple, had a book that I was looking for. Um, one book. And it is Wonder Woman number 205 with uh, Wonder Woman riding a, a big old missile or torpedo or whatever that is. Um, strapped to it by her her magic lasso and being shot at by planes. So that's, I guess that qualifies as just a bad day um, in Midtown. So, but that's in, uh, that's in really good shape. Um, it also features uh, part of the Nubia storyline. So I wanted to get that. Uh, I had a copy of it you know, really rough. So this is a, an upgrade for me on that one. All right, next up, uh, and this is this is actually a funny story. So I, I picked up this book because uh, it was the last book that I needed for a particular run of Bernie Wrights in it. Uh, and it's, it's Swamp Thing number two. All right, so this is the last issue that I needed for my Bernie Wrights in run on Swamp Thing, which uh, stretches from issue one to issue number 10. Um, and I got this off of a dealer who was surprised. So I, I got this actually right as they uh, had opened up that day. And he was like, so thankful he goes, like finally I, I'm selling something to uh, to one of, the, one of the, the, the regular people coming in. I was like, sorry to disappoint you, man. I'm a dealer as well. So he, uh, he thought he was getting, uh, he, he was gonna get that, but he didn't. So uh, this is uh, a great book, um, a great cover. It's in great shape. It's, it's you know in the range that I wanted, which was uh, a VF or better. Uh, but so happy to get that and close off that burning rights and run on Swamp Thing. Uh, the, you know, those usual burning rights and monsters. Very cool stuff. Uh, and this I got from the same guy uh, at that booth. And he gave me a really good deal on it, which was nice. And this is one of the early ones that I was missing. This is Justice League of America, issue number 10, featuring the fantastic fingers of Felix Faust, or better known as the first appearance of Felix Faust. Uh, and you know, he's obviously a magic user. Because he's got all the all the Justice League there, at least nine out of nine out of ten, all right? Because he's got one thumb free, he can just kind of smack him around with. So, taking those down, uh, I, I think I have uh, two issues, two and three issues, two and three. I still need to get of uh, of that Justice League run in order to finish the first ten, uh, and then really I just have a couple more in the early registers there. All right, so. I did get one more, actually, I got two more books from that previous booth that had the uh, had the Adam Hughes covers and such. Uh, I went back there later uh, and, and found this uh, on the wall because, you know, it's during setup, right? So we're in there early, so we're just seeing what they're getting out to the wall and then going around, we're trading, we're like, hey, I'll pick this up, get you this, so on and so forth. Um, so off the 2021 hunt list. This is the San Diego Comic-Con variant for Superman and Batman number eight, featuring the cover of interior work by Michael Turner. This is absolutely stunning, solid 9A candidate gonna be excited to send this thing out to CGC to get encapsulated. So happy to finally have a copy of this and, uh, and have it in the collection. Just, it's an astonishing work and it's, it's the reason why they use this particular uh, interior page as the cover for the German edition of issue number four, which you know, I think they did like, they doubled up. So yeah, so issue number four had issue number eight, uh, so to speak. And um, yeah, just, just incredible work. Just super grateful to have found it. And that's not even the best book. Well, I mean, to me, it's one of the best books. But last thing I got, absolute last thing, him and Han about it, went back, 
worked a deal with them, worked out some uh, some magic, and I got a, a companion to my Flash Comics number 86. This is Justice League of America number 75, featuring the first appearance of Dinah Lance as the Black Canary, where she comes over from Earth 2 to Earth 1 and joins the Justice League of America in a beautiful 8.5. I couldn't even be happier. I really couldn't. It's, it's fantastic. It's nice and clean. Um, Bat could probably use some cleaning. And I, I've looked it over a bit, and I don't think that I can get a better grade on it because there's a pretty significant color break happening right there above my finger. So I think 8.5 is as far as we're gonna be able to get with it. If I if I did crack it out or, or do anything like that, it would just, it wouldn't be worth it uh, just to clean the back because I'm just looking at the back cover anyway. But this is, this is a big one for me. I, I'm, I'm a, a big Black Canary fan and I think that, uh, I think she's great. And I'm glad to have this uh, knocked off the list. So that's it. That's, uh, that's what I've got going on. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please, by all means, click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell and you'll find out when I release more great content. Uh, we are dropping content three days a week, um, different segments, uh, haul videos, unboxings, uh, other segments, and uh, lots of new stuff coming out. So thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.